Hi, I'm Tim Carroll, and we're talking about Lambda 2. Uh, specifically now, we're going to go into the I.O. menu. The I.O. menu sets things that normally will be set only once during installation. Uh, things like GPI and GPO and what their functions are. Uh, these are not stored in any sort of a preset. Uh, GPI functionality inside the unit can control presets, but the presets are uh, signal routing and signal processing and display and that sort of thing. Uh, what's in the GPI, uh, sorry, the I.O. menu is uh, just basic setup that you're going to do only one time. So uh, I would suggest uh, keeping the user manual as a, a handy reference. There's a, a menu tree uh, that will walk you through it. Uh, you can see it's actually not, uh, there are quite a few menus, but several of them are nested. So there's four GPOs. So things are repeated inside the I.O. menu. It's, it's really not uh, quite as long as it, as it might seem, but it's good to keep this as a reference because it's, uh, it's, it's easy to, uh, to get lost. So just like uh, all linear acoustic products go to the right, uh, uh, down to view setup, go into I.O., down to view. Uh, there's a master bypass. Remember that there are uh, relays in the AES input BNC connectors and the SDI input BNC connectors that will bypass input to output if, uh, in case of power failure. Uh, this activates those relays. Normal mode is disabled. If we go down, right now GPI control is disabled. Uh, if GPI control is turned on, uh, certain functions are not available from the front panel because it's waiting for a GPI command to, to activate it. Speakers on or off. Uh, this allows the unit which has uh, analog outputs, stereo analog plus four uh, dBU balanced outputs that might be driving a, uh, an external power amplifier or a powered speaker. These are powerful speakers, uh, but sometimes if you want to drive a larger external pair that might not be located directly in the rack where this is mounted, there's no reason to have both speakers on at the same time. This allows the, uh, the speakers only to be muted. Uh, right now, the speakers are set to on, so uh, they are not muted. The monitor output, so this shows the XLR connector. Uh, it's showing that it is pre-volume control. So that means that regardless of where we set the volume of the speakers in the unit, a fixed output level uh, is available from the XLR connectors. Setting it to post volume control would allow those XLR connectors to drive powered speakers. And the volume control here would control the uh, level sent to the speakers. The down mix AES output uh, can also be selected to be pre volume or post volume. Right now it's fixed at pre volume, which means that an incoming signal at minus 20 dB full scale will be output at minus 20 dB full scale. The next setting is how clock reference uh, is determined. Uh, the unit has a single clock reference, and it's, it's either internal uh, through the uh, first AES input or SDI. You can manually set this so that if you're going to have an interruption in the clock signal uh, or in input signals, you can actually set the clock input to be uh, sourced from somewhere else. Uh, the only requirement is that the, uh, the unit requires that the inputs be synchronous to begin with. Uh, the normal default is that the source mode sets the clock source, so meaning if you pick SDI, that becomes the clock source. If you pick AES or the, the BNC inputs, uh, then the first AES input becomes the clock source. Uh, internal is only defaulted to if uh, there is nothing connected to the box or if something is not connected to uh, the correct input. So, there's nothing on SDI and there's nothing on AES-1. Uh, do note, uh, and uh, I myself have been caught by this, if you plug an AES input into the, the fifth BNC input and nowhere else, this unit's going to be running on its internal clock, so it's going to be out of sync with what's coming in on that AES cable. So make sure you've got a, a clock reference uh, applied to the box. Again, either uh, the SDI input or the first uh, BNC, the first AES input. Uh, just like in uh, several other products, we'd like to know, it, it sort of helps us to understand how to behave with uh, the clock signal. If it's going to be stable, 
set it as stable. If it's going to be variable, if somebody's going to be uh, crash switching SDI, uh, it helps us if uh, we know that that's going to be the case. It, it helps us determine exactly what to do with resetting clocks internally. Uh, again, if you, if you make a change, you'll notice the asterisk that appears. If you want to save that, uh, you hit the right key on the navigation cluster. If you don't want to save it, you can just move on to the next. This shows the, the vertical ancillary metadata extraction line. It defaults to line 9, which is the SMPTE standard. This shows the, the data ID uh, and the secondary data ID, uh, again, also defaulted to uh, SMPTE standard. If you're not using vertical ancillary metadata, you can, you can ignore these. It doesn't affect anything. Vertical ancillary metadata is asynchronous. Uh, this is a way to select between what's called SMPTE 2020A and 2020B. Uh, normal mode is that it is not asynchronous. Um, so uh, that's why it's set to off. Uh, if it is set to asynchronous, which is uh, normally used by, uh, uh, for example, NORPAC equipment will uh, be the, the SMPTE format that's asynchronous, uh, this needs to be set to on. Again, this is for vertical ancillary metadata. So if you're not using it, you don't have to worry about it. Now we get into the GPI functions. Note that you can only change these if GPI is disabled. So that's in the one of the very top menu selections in this, uh, in this menu tree. And you're able to select between uh, recalling a preset or no function. So there's one for each of the four GPI inputs. And here are the presets. So right now, GPI 1, if you selected it to recall a preset, uh, would recall this uh, BNC input, so AES, PCM over AES, 5.1 plus 2 plus 5.1 plus 2. And you can select any of the available presets to be recalled by uh, that GPI. There's GPI 3, GPI 4, and here are two selections, GPI 3 and GPI 4. This is an interesting function. GPI 3 will be triggered also if HDSDI is detected or SDSDI is detected. This allows, allows the transition between an HD and an SDSDI input to switch presets. So for example, you might have a stereo only program on SDSDI. You'd want to set up perhaps a, a preset that would adjust to just reproduce a stereo program. And where it was HDSDI, you might have a 5.1 channel program, and so you'd want the first program to actually be a 5.1 channel downmix. This allows automatic switching between those two modes. Integration time is for the BS1770 meter. It defaults to 10 seconds. It's adjustable up to 15 seconds, uh, and it bottoms out at 3 seconds. We don't feel that any quicker than that is really useful as a, a loudness measurement. Uh, industry practices has uh, shown the same to be true. Uh, 10 seconds is a, is a pretty reasonable default for continuous monitoring of, of loudness. Uh, there's a utility delay built into Lambda. Uh, one of the things that customers use Lambda for is providing a high quality audio output next to a professional grade LCD or increasingly uh, professional OLED monitors, there is sometimes delay, there's often delay, uh, due to uh, down conversion or even the conversion to drive the displays. Uh, we provide up to 100 milliseconds of utility delay to the speaker output so that lip sync locally can be maintained. It makes up for any of the delay in the monitor. Down mix type can be selected between LTRT, which is a a surround compatible downmix that uses phase encoding for the surround channels, uh, and LORO, which is a stereo compatible downmix, which doesn't use phase encoding for the surround channels. Uh, listening through two speakers, either one is okay. Listening to a downmix uh, in LTRT through headphones might be a little bit less pleasing. There's a little bit more phase activity happening there, uh, so LORO uh, might be a better choice. Uh, do note that because of the phase encoding, required by LTRT, the delay during downmix is, is slightly more by a few milliseconds. The exact specification uh, is in the user manual. 
GPOs a TTL compatible uh, output, so uh, 5 volts uh, if active, 0 volts if not, uh, is present. You can have it indicate when a GPI has been triggered. So if you're holding GPI 1 low and GPO 1 is set to follow GPI, that could be used to indicate, uh, to light an LED, to provide indication that GPI 1 has been triggered. You can also use it to report if the loudness is over threshold, under threshold, so too loud or too quiet. If the center channel is under, this is really good for if the center channel has disappeared, this can create an alarm. And we'll get into some of the some of the parameters that you can adjust to determine when to report the alarm. All channels under, so if audio happens to disappear, not usually a good thing. Auto channel under is for when metadata is present. So if you've set the, uh, the lambda to trigger if center channel is missing, well, if you're monitoring a program stream that happens to change between 2 channel and 5.1, center channel is going to naturally disappear sometimes. If metadata says that it shouldn't be there, then there's no reason to trigger an alarm. So that's what auto mode does. This reports uh, any channel being over the loudness threshold, uh, so not just center. Uh, reference loss and metadata loss are, are two other uh, indications. So if reference changes, if you're monitoring a feed and you want to have an indication that uh, something has gone wrong, uh, this is a way to do it. Uh, and also if the front panel buttons are locked, this is a way to indicate to an external device that the unit is actually in locked mode. Okay, and that's for all four GPOs. Here are where the thresholds are set. So each GPO can have a different threshold. Right now it's set to minus 40 dB, which is the default. GPO 4. This is how much time to wait before the GPO is triggered. So if center channel goes away for a split second, it's probably not uh, worthwhile to indicate that something is wrong. Uh, this is where you can select how long to wait before sending a an indication that something has gone wrong. So center channel missing for 20 seconds might be better. Audio missing for 20 seconds, uh, all channels missing for 20 seconds, that's, that's probably a problem. Again, uh, selectable for all four GPOs. And then how long should we hold that GPO active? So this is sort of like hysteresis. Once the GPO has triggered that center channel or uh, something has occurred, how long should we hold that indication active? We don't want to be twittering back and forth uh, between two values. That, that produces useless information. So this sort of smooths it out so that if uh, the change happens, we, we turn it into one event rather than many. Again, selectable for all four GPOs. And we're back to the top at uh, Master Bypass Disable. Again, uh, details are provided in the manual for uh, any of the individual settings. Uh, but really pretty straightforward and, and uh, uh, extremely flexible.